Season 11, Ultra Watch, few new skins, two new mythics. Let's go for the uh, patch notes. And the new push map, although push is still not a great game mode. But uh, we have a new push map. I'm sure we'll try and play that today, making content on the new map. And uh, see how good it is. See if it's a bit more... I feel like all the push maps are very repetitive, right? They're very repetitive. They're all the same, like both sides have high ground. Both sides are very, very bland, to say the least. So we'll have a look at the new map. Competitive play updates. Rank percentage is now displayed on the competitive progress page. The change we've been asking for since since ranked 2.0. Rename the modifiers to win streak and loss rate to win trend and loss trend to more accurately convey these modifiers. Uh, are calculating by weighing the most recent games more heavily, but that they are not true streaks. Good. I like the clarity. Everyone likes actually knowing why they're ranking up and down. Good change. Add more parameters for how the matchmaker handles wire groups so it can better ensure queue times. Nice. Don't have to wait a whole hour to play in a wide group anymore. A button that allows you to view the match's final scoreboard is added to each page during the end of game flow. Nice. Better matchmaking. Better uh, transparency. That's the word I'm looking for. Hero updates. The one we actually wanted to get into. Knockdown time when two charging abilities collide from 2 to 1.7. Now you're down for less time, so you're not as vulnerable to Bob or to Malga or to um, or to the enemy team if you're just obviously get counterplayed there. Still dangerous, but not as much. Diva reduced the weapon spread from 3.75 to 3.37 degrees. Nice. Tighter spread. Better against squishies. More dangerous. Impact damage definitely was needed. Didn't do much damage. Wasn't actually worth actually going into people too often. Um, but just more effective against smaller targets. Nice. I like to see it. Junker Queen! This is the ta this is the change that I had a sneak peek at because uh, I, I saw those Junker Queen changes and uh, I wanted to have a look. I got nosy. I got curious, which um, obviously this one is to counter the tank passive that was added last patch, because tanks basically just didn't move to Jagged Blade. Like it wouldn't affect people at all, especially in those Queen 1v1s. Like y you did it for the damage and the health, but you didn't do it for the actual tactical gameplay when it came to Queen 1v1s or Tank 1v1s. Pulse Tank further goes against the uh, tank passive. So they should pull probably about the same as they did um, pre tank passive changes and the startup time reduced from 0.75 to 0.5 seconds. So that uh, that charge up time, that spin up time, spool time, decrease, it's nice. You're not gonna die as much. You're not gonna be as vulnerable to stuns, especially to cast nade or anything that would ruin your ult before you got it off. Pretty nice change as well as the instant health from my shout from the last patch means that queen is gonna be very nice and you're not gonna be uh, robbed of an ult as much. Orisa, Javelin Spin, cooldown from 9 to 8 seconds. Orisa wasn't particularly uh, lacking, but I guess this makes her just back in line with other tanks. Roadhog, base health reduced from 650 to 600, and the damage reduction. Now, he won't be able to survive absolutely everything with no repercussions. Nice. I still, in my opinion, feel like you should be able to be stunned out of either the ult or the take a breather, but having less health and less damage reduction is definitely nice. You're not going to be able to run into an enemy team, hook someone, kill them, and then just run back out with everyone shooting you because you have an insane damage reduction and an insane base health. Cassidy, secondary fan, the hammer damage reduced from 50 to 45. This is definitely nice for tanks like Winston, who would dive in, get fan the hammered, roll, fan the hammered again. Pop, 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 pop. So less damage overall. Um, so between the what? What is it? Six shots. Six times five. That's thirty. Less damage. It's nice. And combat roll damage reduced from seventy-five to fifty percent. So probably not going to survive as many diva bombs. Probably not going to survive as many pulse nades. Um, kind of bringing him back in line because, again, last, I mean, he's gone from the worst to probably one of the best tank, uh, DPS this season, sorry. Um, so that's nice, bringing him back in line. And the main change to it, 
My grenade is now back to Overwatch Flashbang. Hinders enemies instead of stunning them. Still, you know, can't just <laughs> launch it across the map and hit someone. Um, is actually, I'm guessing, is a is a close range thing. I'm guessing it's how probably old stun worked. So still very annoying hinder, but um, not gonna be able to just you know absolutely launch it across the map and hit random people. Movement speed reduction increase from 30 to 50, so technically an increase to the um, hinder. Hinder now provokes crouching movement. I, I guess that makes sense to a degree. Just I guess they're saying how it goes, and. 45 explosive damage with a 12 second cooldown. Nice. We'll have to see how he performs this season, because obviously last season he was absolutely busted, especially against tanks like Junker Queen. So, cast Deadeye, movement speed penalty now scales over time from 70 to 35. Apologies. So you're going to get faster, but you're also going to get more vulnerable. Okay, makes sense. I like it. You can actually maybe get kills with it, but again, for a little bit more risk. May, secondary fire base projectile size reduced, so she can't just absolute just pew, pew, sniper May from across the map. And the damage is increased to make up for those less hits that you're gonna get because of it. Reaper, weapon spread reduced from 6.5 to 6 degrees. Definitely better against smaller heroes now, as he's kind of just outclassed as a tank buster to well, to Cassidy at the moment. So a little bit better against squishy targets. Um, it's going to be easier to kill them. And is not going to be um, mm, as as passive in a game. Cast time reduced from 1.5 to 1.2. So again, like Queen, less vulnerability in that cast time to where you can be um, hit out of it. Still awful? Yes, it's still... It's, it's still awful. He still should not be a tank buster. Tank busters should not exist where there's only one tank in the game. But oh well. Sojourn, railgun, uh, fire dam sorry, secondary fire damage. So this is the railgun. Reduced from 30 to 130 down to 1 to 100. So it can no longer basically put you on 1 HP. And if she has like 5 charge, for example, she's not going to do 30 damage. She's only going to do 1. So that scale is now... So the scale on your secondary fire meter is exactly the damage that you're going to do. Secondary fire projectile no longer requires overclock to pierce enemy players. So obviously to counter this change being effectively enough, it is gonna it is gonna pierce, which I, I I like actually. Primary shots five per second increased, so higher DPS is gonna pierce players, but is gonna do less damage with this. Um, and overclock. Increased race from 100 to 120, so faster um, overclock charge, which is which is nice, which is nice. So it's not really enough. It's not really a buff. It's more of just a adjustment to make um, her primary fire more her kit than her secondary. Sumatra base health increased from 100 to 25. I didn't really see too much Sumatras, but I hope with this like many Ryan players we've seen over the past um, couple weeks that she's not gonna come out too much more because that primary fire rate charge is looking very deadly when you pair it with the extra 25 HP. But we'll see. We'll see. She's a tank buster now. She always was to a degree, but now you're gonna have to like very much play around not letting her just feed on shields because it's, it's even worse now. Iliari, outburst damage from 10 to 25. Didn't really see a need for it, but more of a defensive ability. More use than just mobility, so you get that, you get that aspect of actually dealing damage with it. Healing Palon, healing per projectile, 30 to 40. Iliari basically gave so little heals that that's nice, especially with the extra health that we have now received. Healing Pylon is only now half as effective when healing Iliari, and the max health increase from 100 to 25, so it won't die as easily. But also, Iliari is not going to be able to 1v1 with this thing all the time because it gives half healing. So to Iliari, it's only going to give 20 per second. Kiriko, cooldown from 7 to 8, so baiting out is going to be a lot nicer uh, and a lot easier to communicate with teammates where you can all dive her and she's not just going to instantly have it again and just whoop, to the other side of the map. And Protecting Suzu no longer cleanses hard knockdown stuns. So that is going to be Ryan, which is a huge change. That's also, I'm 
gonna guess Rock. And I don't think there are many others other than maybe Maugas as well. So it's it seems like those three abilities, I believe, are gonna be the ones that aren't cleansed anymore. So Rock's gonna be a lot nicer. Uh, and so is Ryan Shatter. But no, just Ryan. I, I know I think I think Rock counts in that. We can test it, but I believe Rock counts. The thing is, though, you can still cleanse the actually initial wave, right? A cleanse, so it just goes through you? We'll have to do some testing on that. Colosseo! And here it is. They have uh, removed the glass, so you can't just, you know, have this... Just, where you get to basically just watch the enemy through that, and you just get to look at them funny. Um, and... Just wave. Basically, you can actually shoot them, and because of that, they added a nice little stairway for us. I believe they also added a little bit of protection into the spawn, so you can kind of play around this instead of just immediately being beamed by a widow or a soldier or anyone who would just be holding this flank line. And also, which this actually surprised me, but it does make sense, especially when you had a lot of ball players having the absolute time of their life, they've added a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a map extension here, which is a nice rework. You won't get uh, kicked off as much. The thing I see though is this mega here, actually, which is probably going to be quite a play point as it is very, very close to this, especially for the attacking team that may be playing down here um, and taking fire. They're going to be able to actually take cover here and play around this mega. So we'll have to see how that goes. They added stairs to the room on the left. What do you mean up to up to here? I thought they I think they always had stairs to this one. But um I guess we'll see. Um push map updates, reduce the time the match time from 10 to 8 minutes in quick play, which is nice because it took way too long. It was like playing a comp game. And increase the rush pro bot speed by 10% overall. So push maps are not going to go on for absolutely decades. Um, and obviously the bug fixes that come with this update again. Right, let's go have a look at this. Let's go have... Time for the oh! That's insane! That's so bad, man. Oh my god, and now actually I can deal damage to Hog because he doesn't have an insane oh damage reduction. Okay, that Queen's spool up time is crazy. Oh my god, I'm faster, look. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, 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 w